What's up guys, I'm the Lazy Goldmaker. If you're a classic player and you want to understand how the auction house works or even start making gold on the auction house, then this is the video for you. We're going to cover the absolute best entry level gold making method in the entire game, in my personal opinion. Um, we're going to be flipping materials for profit. Flipping materials. It's fantastic. So the general idea, very, very simple. Buy materials, sell materials. That's it. You're going to buy materials for a cheap price, and then you're going to try to sell them for the normal price, pretty much. Um, that's the general goal. We're going to buy um, items when they're cheaper than, than the average, um, and sell them at the market value, at the market value according to Trade Skill Master, which is the add-on I'm using here. If you're completely unfamiliar with this, then this is what we'll have to be using. Uh, it simplifies the entire process so much, but uh, that, that's the general idea. Uh, it computes a market value based on the price over the last 14 days, and you're going to try to buy items that are cheaper than that and just sell it at the market value. Uh, and the reason you're doing that is because there's so many people who are willing to buy an item or a material at its market value. Um, for one thing, crafters, for the most part, are willing to buy tons of materials at market value. That They can usually make a profit off of that. I'm buying huge amounts. I'm even, when I'm doing crafting, I'm buying more than, for more than the market value in some cases. And uh, we generally see most materials like vary in price around the market value. Um, over the week, over the day, suddenly some big farmer is just slamming a bunch of serenite or whatever onto the auction house. Prices go down. Um, because they don't sell, so people just start undercutting. And then you buy out a chunk, and suddenly the reset day happens. Someone crafts a huge chunk of, say, uh, living belt buckles. Now the price is going up. Um, and this also works for old materials, um, classic wrath materials. People are buying those still because they're power leveling professions to, to max. So you can do it with, with every era of materials. You can see here, I've started doing this again. I've I've got my account running. This is the Trade Skill Master resale summary. Uh, and over the last 30 days, I've made 500 gold profit uh, off of items that I bought and then sold. Uh, there are some lies here, like Eternal Shadow. I bought a huge chunk of these, way too many, and the price collapsed. So I ended up sending 300 to my alt. So I'm actually probably making a, a loss on that. And you'll be making losses on some items, but you'll be making up for it. And as we can see here, I made a huge chunk on Serenite Bars. I made tons of money on Soul Dust because it absolutely exploded in price for who knows what reason. Someone just reset the <coughs> Someone just reset the entire market, so it's fantastic. Um, and that's going to happen. Now, what items are you going to do this with? Well, I'm focusing on materials because they're, you can post buy in loads of weird stack sizes and sell in nice even ones, large ones, um, preferably. But I typically sell in like stacks of 5, stacks of 10, stacks of 20, maybe stacks of 15. Uh, and then people can easily overpay for exactly the stack size they want. So they'll happily, I happily overpay for stacks of 20 a little bit. Like I'll pay 5% more if I can do stacks of 20 when I'm buying materials, because it saves me a ton of time. Um, and that's that's been consistent across loads of people are doing that. Um, so that's why I like materials. Now, as for what types of materials, there's one thing you need to be really aware of with this. Um, and that's deposit costs, uh, which is based on the vendor sell price. So, for instance, I have um, herbs in my bags. You can see here in the in the TSM um, tooltip, this one has a vendor sell price of one silver. So herbs are generally really good. Uh, bars are a lot more risky. So I think I have some serenite bars on the auction house. Oh, I sold all my serenite bars. Never mind. Uh, but if you, you look at something like mithril, uh, mithril bars. They have a vendor sell price of four silver, so also pretty low uh, compared to the the price. But if, then, if you look at serenite bars, um, uh, serenite bar, serenite bar, serenite bar has a vendor sell price of one gold twenty five silver, uh, which means that the deposit cost for posting one on the auction house um, for forty eight hours or for the maximum duration that's going to be sixty percent of the vendor sell price. Uh, which is going to be 80 silver per bar to post them on the auction house. So if it inspire, expires once, you're guaranteed to lose gold. Uh, rule of thumb is to avoid any item where the auction house price, the price that you're expected to sell the item at, is um, less than five times the vendor sell price. So we would not be doing serenite bars at all because you're probably going to lose a ton of money on, <laughs> on deposits. 
Uh, of course, you might have seen from my uh, resale summary that I I did <laughs> didn't heed that, but that's beside the point. I've lost gold on on deposits before, um, and we're also looking for items that are going to vary in price, um, which means that they're either farmed and sold in large quantities or bought in large quantities. So the, there's a large chance that the price is going to change uh, over a period of time. Now, some good items for this includes herbs enchanting materials enchanting materials are fantastic they don't have a vendor sell price so they're super cheap to post uh enchanting is is therefore fantastic herbs are great leather can be okay or on bars can be good primarily but primarily tbc and classic materials uh not so much the wrath ones because they have a little bit too high of a, a vendor price um those are the ones I also... Eternals can be good, but Eternals also have a little bit high uh, vendor prices. So only the more expensive ones, and they're a little bit on the riskier side. Um, but yeah, classic materials, TBC materials work fantastic. We can see here in my bags right now, I have Nether Bloom, I have Dream Foil, I have Soul Dust. Um, I don't really have that many uh, Wrath materials right now. Uh, but I do have a lot of classic ones, and then, but I've sold Wrath materials, from, as we can see from my sales data. Um, so that's the, the general idea. You, you go about this as you go wide. So if you take a look at like my last month, I started with 1500 gold um, a little while ago. And since then I've had 3000 gold in sales. I have spent 3600 gold. Um, so I made, I've lost 600 gold. I also have some materials left over. And as I said before, I had the 300 eternal shadow uh, investment, which was just a, a big, big, big loss. Um, I had about 600 gold on the auction house and we do have um, a couple of hundred golds in my bags as well. So um, we're uh, probably sitting at about what we started with because I made the big loss on Eternal Shadows. Because um, the value of my auctions plus the value of the gold in my bags, that's about what I started with. And then we do have some materials left over, uh, but I don't have that much. On the auction house. So the general way is you build your auction house. That's what you're focusing on when you're doing this, which means you're just every day uh, you're going to log in and you're going to check uh, some of the materials, maybe not all of them, uh, focusing on ones you don't have a lot of. So right now, obviously, I have a decent chunk of uh, of TBC, um, TBC uh, weed or <laughs> TBC um, herbs, not weed. The fell weed is obviously a weed, but they're, the rest of them aren't weeds. Um, obviously I wouldn't buy Felweed because it's 5 silver and uh, just a 10 silver value. It's too low relative to the material or to the, the vendor sell price. Nightmare Wine, this is a, obviously a great item, really expensive compared to the um, 12 silver 50. Um, and uh, so this is something I could, could buy. Um, now the way I use Trade Skill Master is we're going to try to buy items at 80% of the market value. Um, and in the group and in the TSM main portal, you can find in the blog post linked in the video description, um, the group has a shopping operation that, that covers this. Uh, so it means that it's evaluating this percentage is compared to 80% of DB market or the market value. So I'm willing to buy anything that shows up as less than 100% here. Uh, pretty much in, in theory. Now I might not always buy because like right here it would be very expensive. I would need to buy out everything here, but then the next one up would be very, very expensive. The problem is this, there's a huge wall here. So this is perhaps not the best um, today, but then we can check another another group. Um, well, deselect the, the herbs, I guess. Oh yeah. And we can check um, classic enchanting materials. These don't have a um, vendor price, so they are just fantastic. Here, this is great. Um, here, there's a good chunk available. I know that my posting price is going to be around the, uh, the market value, which is 125%. Um, so there's like a decent volume here, but I also know that Dream Dust is something that people buy a lot of. Uh, the region average daily sold is about 250, so people will be buying through, if one or two people are leveling enchanting, then they're going to buy through all of this and they'll be buying mine at 125. Um, so, and I don't have any Dream Dust, and I've had really great success flipping Dream Dust in the past, so uh, I'm just going to buy all of the Dream Dust below my maximum price here. All of it. Um, and then you do that on a couple of different materials, 
Um, generally speaking, I'd suggest spending all of, all of your gold, or at least all of the gold that you are comfortable spending every time you do a shopping scan. Um, because it's better to keep your gold on the auction house. Uh, or rather, it's better to invest your gold in profitable, potentially profitable markets as soon as possible. Um, so I'd suggest doing that. Just reinvest. Vision Dust, another great one. Oh, wow, this was perfect. Look how little. Uh, and then there's a huge gap up here. Uh, and Vision Dust is another just fantastic item. Uh, I've had so much success selling this throughout the years. Um, so yeah, we're buying all of that. Um, and you do that for a couple of groups, then you go pick it all up from your bags and you run the post scan for all of the material groups. And, and that's it, that's it. I'd suggest doing this like once every day, log in, spend five, 10, 15 minutes, uh, or at least every time you play, check check the auction house. It doesn't take a long, that much time. When I did, uh, when I did like time myself doing this in, uh, in TBC for a week, uh, I spent about 10 minutes a day uh, logging in, making making gold. Uh, the gold per hour was about 300, 400 gold per hour. Not sure what it would be right now. I haven't had time to do like a full experiment. And your gold per hour is also going to depend on how much gold you have available. And it might also depend on what time of day you're, you're doing this. But it's been extremely consistent. This was something I advocated for years in every version of WoW, all the way up until BFA when they changed the auction house on retail. It works fantastically on the stack size based auction house um, because you're part of what you're doing is making it easier to buy in the correct stack size for what people want to do. Um, so yeah, get into this guys, try it out, uh, start small if you're uncomfortable. This is also one of the best ways to get comfortable with the auction house, which is the best way to make gold in my opinion. Uh, now, if you're looking for something else that's worked really well for me in uh, in Wrath, I'm going to plug my video on PvP gear. I logged into my bankers, like PvP gear, even after phase 2 is out. It's looking more profitable than ever, the entry-level PvP gear. I'm shocked. Uh, profit margins are through the roof compared to what they were. And they're still selling, uh, so definitely check that out, and we'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.